right now on five on your side at 10. Boy, the strong wind gusts continue tonight and tomorrow. Then the thrust to much warmer air for the weekend. Thieves caught on camera breaking into an animal shelter. Tonight, the search for the crooks who stole medicine, electronics, and even leftovers. Our top story, a stash of stolen power tools, appliances, and bicycles recovered from a South City home. The house was loaded with just all kinds of stuff. Tonight, the push by police to get those items back into the right hands. And investigators believe it's all part of a suspected burglary ring. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Kelly Jackson. Police raided a house in South City last Tuesday and arrested three people only on five in your side tonight. Robert Townsend talked to a neighbor who says he saw it all and he joins us live outside police headquarters. Kelly and Mike, police tell me they recovered thousands of dollars worth of stolen items. Get this from that one house. A trail of tools, a heap of home appliances, lots of lumber, and plenty of personal objects. Those are just some of the more than 100 stolen goods St. Louis Police Department's South Patrol Burglary Squad says it found inside this Ellendale home last Tuesday morning. I saw bicycles, uh, air conditioner, uh, heater combinations, ladders, tires. This neighbor asked us to not show his face. He says armed officers and SWAT team members pulled up and swarmed the house in the 2700 block of Hermitage. The house was loaded with just all kinds of stuff. The police loaded up a big box truck and they said that they would probably have to come back with a couple more. Neighbors say police spent several hours packing up the items they say were stolen from homes, garages, businesses, and storage units. Neighbors also tell us for more than a year they complained about the suspicious activity and possible drug dealing here. There's just a lot of traffic coming in and out and uh a lot of activity in the backyard as far as moving stuff around. People passed out in cars. Police arrested Gage Lutman, pictured here in a white T-shirt, the male homeowner, and a woman. Just last week, Lutman was charged in several other burglaries and wanted for possibly 25 more. Now there's big relief. The whole neighborhood is excited. After the big bust, arrests, and the house is condemned. We just look at each other and just give everybody the thumbs up. Now, police are asking anyone who thinks their stolen items might be in that big seizure to email them. You can find a link right now on KSDK.com. Live downtown, Robert Townsend, five on your side. Developing tonight, about two hours ago, an 80-year-old man was rushed to the hospital after being shot in the chest. It happened on Vandeventer near Cottage Avenue in North St. Louis. No word on the man's condition. We are still waiting to hear back from police on what led to the shooting and if there are any suspects. It's a windy night across the St. Louis region. There's even been a few stray rain showers. Scott is off tonight. Weather first meteorologist Jim Castillo is here with what we can expect overnight and details on a big weekend warm up. Yeah, it's a huge weekend warm up in the 80s. We'll get there. A warm front comes our way Saturday, but we still have some wind gust out there this evening. I've seen the wind die a little bit St. Louis to Chesterfield, but then you look at St. Charles, still some gusts near 30. Same with Alton and Flora over 30 miles an hour. So it's 55 degrees right now. We're headed to the 40s. It's clear those showers are over with. It is still a little on the breezy side. You can see those wind gusts tonight over 30 miles an hour. Uh, by the way, the rainfall that we had ending this morning, really over the past 36 hours, St. Louis 1.26, Deloge 2.02, Freeburg, Illinois 1.76. So a good soaking rain, but coming this weekend, plenty of sunshine. And this is Sunday. We have the St. Louis City SC game. Kickoff is at 345, 84 degrees. And that sets the stage for thunderstorms next week. I'll time those out coming up in just a few minutes. Tonight, leaders at an East St. Louis animal shelter want to know who would break in after hours and steal from them. The crime overnight was all caught on camera. Brent Solomon is just back after talking with the nonprofit, which helps low income pet owners. Well, Kelly, I'm about to show you those surveillance images in just a moment. The folks over at Gateway Pet Guardians are hoping someone will know who the bold thieves are so police can put a stop to it. 
In the midst of the sounds of dogs barking and little kitties answering when greeted. Oh, there's Harry. Hi, Harry. Is a sense of shock among the vibrant team that keeps this place going. It puts an eerie feeling in your stomach. Um, to have people that don't belong here in here with your animals that are vulnerable at the time. It was just before three Thursday morning. Take a look at surveillance video of these men making their way into the Gateway Pet Guardian Shelter here on North 15th Street in East St. Louis. We do have one video of the guy like kind of tiptoeing down the back hallway. One of them with a can in his hand. But they like ate food, drank energy drinks out of the refrigerator. And then made off with the goods. A laptop used for note taking. Where we report any, you know, behavior concerns, any illnesses. And so that's used regularly and throughout the day from our animal care team. So we're going to have to replace that. And drugs meant for animals. Trazodone, which is a sedative. Um, gabapentin, which is an anti-inflammatory. Um, and then uh, carprofen, which is like your, our equivalent of 800 milligram ibuprofen. So it doesn't have a good street value and you're certainly not going to get high on it. It is why leaders here aren't sure why the thieves felt the need to target them. If you're desperate enough to break in somewhere and then, you know, you're, you're hungry, of course I feel bad for you. However, you know, we can't go about it that way. And so we have some things that we're going to do on our part in terms of additional security things that we're going to put in place. Our whole nonprofit animal shelter and so that stuff is going to cost money. After five years of being in East St. Louis, the shelter says they haven't had any problems and they love the sense of community that they have there. They wonder if it was outsiders who did this. They're now fundraising to replace what was lost. You can find that info on KSDK.com. A Shell gas station in downtown St. Louis is closing because of crime. This is part of a settlement after two lawsuits were filed against the business, calling it a nuisance property. Police say the gas station had nearly 600 calls for service in the last two years. Today we talked to one of the residents who helped file one of the lawsuits more than two years ago. It has just been an unresolved uh, nuisance that has burdened downtown St. Louis until um, its impending closure uh, this summer. The gas station is set to close by August 1st. No other gas stations or convenience stores are allowed to be built there in the future. Tonight, the world is still reacting to the death of a football star turned controversial figure. O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. His family says he passed away after a battle with prostate cancer. His football, acting, and broadcast career will forever be overshadowed by the trial of the century. In 1994, he was charged and later acquitted in the brutal murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. He was later found liable for their murders. We talked to Bob Costas today, who worked alongside O.J. and even visited him in jail before his murder trial. People have many chapters in their lives. Uh, it's hard to find anyone with two chapters so starkly different. O.J. the football hero, O.J. the beloved celebrity, and then O.J. Uh, the accused murderer in uh, the criminal case and convicted in a certain sense in the civil case. Most of the Goldman family's civil judgment against Simpson has reportedly not been paid. Ron Goldman's father, Fred, released a statement today saying, it's no great loss to the world, it's a further reminder of Ron being gone. Simpson was ultimately sent to prison for a robbery in Las Vegas in 2008. He served nine years of a 33-year sentence before being paroled in 2017. Tomorrow's voter, tomorrow, voters in Bridgeton will head to the polls for a special election to elect a new mayor. Two candidates are on the ballot. Both currently serve on the city council. Randy Hine has been on the council for 12 years and is currently serving as acting mayor. Don Hood has served the city for decades as first a police officer, then chief of police and assistant to the mayor. Now, the special election is being held two months after the death of Mayor Terry Briggs. The win will reserve the remaining three years of his term. A new marijuana dispensary is holding a grand opening tomorrow in Soulard, and it's located just feet from a school. Kind Goods is located on South Broadway, right across the street from Lift for Life Academy. Students have protested this dispensary and another opening nearby. The city of St. Louis opted out of a Missouri state law requiring dispensaries to be 1,000 feet away from schools.
Tonight, the screening of a documentary that shines the spotlight on the black maternal health crisis. Sister Doula follows the work of Kansas City nurse Hakima Payne, a Missouri doula who is working to educate and help reduce the mortality rate for black mothers and babies in the state. Filmmaker Emmett Williams followed Payne for five years as she worked to raise awareness about the health disparities among black families. St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones attended tonight's event saying federal funds are helping further the cause. I am in a unique position to be able to uh, fund and support this work. We've been able to direct some of our American Rescue Plan Act funds to support doulas, uh, to support maternal health, um, and we are happy and glad to do that. Mayor Jones also declared today as Black Doula Day in the city of St. Louis. A beloved high school girls basketball coach is recovering at home tonight, less than a month after suffering a heart attack during the state tournament. The family of Dan Rolfus announced today that he has been discharged from Barnes Jewish Hospital. They add he still faces some challenges and they thanked everyone for their support. Rolfus is the longtime head coach at Incarnate Word Academy. He fell ill after the team's semifinal game last month in Columbia. The next night, they went on to win their seventh straight state title. I think they're happy we are gone and thought we'd keep our mouths shut.